Giraffoids are a diverse group, encompassing a wide range of even-toed ungulates, including not only the more famous giraffes, of course, but also akapi and pronghorns, and their diversity during the Cenozoic was even more diverse. Many of these genera deserve their own videos in and of themselves, and one clear example is one described recently, being the subject of this video, Discocaryx Sesha. Their fossilized remains were discovered in the Halamagai formation of northern China by paleontologist Jing Men and his team, who stumbled across the fossils during excavations at the site in the Zhongar Basin back in 1996, with them coming across a hunk of skull. He could tell that it was some kind of mammalian brain case, with the top of it being flattened like an iron press. Alongside some neck vertebrae, which were also conspicuously thickened, and a jawbone, the remains were compared to other museum specimens around the world to identify them, although they couldn't find a match at the time, and so the remains were simply referred to as strange beast. The fossils remained unidentified until 2015, where the bones caught the eye of Shi Shui Wang, another paleontologist who utilised a CT scanner to take a deeper look at the structure of the skull elements and to compare them to living animals, goys and gazelle, as well as the reeves munchak animals that were considered as close relatives. He found that the bone structure of the animal's inner ear was most similar to giraffes, indicating that they were likely a part of the same broad group, Giraffoidea, with the distinctive headgear also showing similarities to the horn-like ossicones seen in giraffes and their extinct relatives, which was found to be nearly one inch or two and a half centimetres thick around where their foreheads would have been, which has further implications for their ecology and especially behaviour, as will be discussed. Wang and his team named the animal Discocaryx Sesha after Sesha, the one-horned mythical creature from Chinese legends, with the genus name coming from the words disco, round plates, and Caryx, meaning horn. The animals themselves date to around the early Miocene, around 16.9 million years ago, standing about as tall as a sheep, and having a neck length comparable to other, similar-sized mammals, but they were unique in one incredible aspect. Their head and neck features were, as mentioned, conspicuously thickened, implying that they were constructed in a way to withstand a tremendous amount of force for some given reason, with a skull roof having a large, flat surface. This surface was likely sheathed in keratin, as the tissue present on the fossil was centrifugally accumulated, acting in a direction away from the base, which in turn formed radial vascular grooves and pores on its surface. Said roughened surface could then house a keratinous integument, with the tissue growing within the dermis on the headgear's dorsal surface, with thin layers of new tissue being developed evenly to coat its surface. The older layers would then have been pushed outwards to form somewhat of a helmet-shaped structure as it increased in diameter, forming an even thicker dome. Alongside this powerful structure, the necks were also a fascinating piece of anatomy to look into, which alongside the skull roof were also very robust, indicating that they were also built to withstand a tremendous amount of force. The head and neck joints were very complex, with them having very unusual atlanto-occipital and intercervical articulations that were extremely enlarged, with their condyles being eventually fused and their basic cranium being expanded to form a pentagonal basilar platform. The ventral arch of the atlas is also correspondingly thickened, forming a complex surface for articulation. Research carried out on the head and neck joints found that they were the most complicated among any mammals known to date, which appeared to indicate intense head bossing when compared to other animals known to commonly engage in said behaviours, which from the previously established anatomy seems evident enough. An enlarged, atlanto-occipital articulation, but not enlarged between the other cervicals, has also been observed in musk ox and their close extinct relatives, although being less pronounced than in discocaryx, indicating that their method of head bossing was very extreme. To assess their capacity for head bussing, the researchers digitally reconstructed the head and neck joints using a technique called finite element analysis to test just how much force they could withstand. Compared to three extant head busses, musk ox, argali mountain and blue sheep, the simulation sets out to explore how well the bones and other objects dispersed differing impact forces under different conditions, including intense head bussing duels, and it had some interesting results. It was found that in the time history curves of strain energy the bone structures endured, the pink values of the extant headbusters was one to five times larger than that of discocaryx, with the latter showing barely any strain on their neck and head joints under similar pressures. This showed that the mechanical effects observed in the cranium of discocaryx greatly surpassed those of extant headbusters in both strain energy absorption and protection, and that they could therefore handle even heavier blows. Alongside the complex head and neck joints, Discocaryx's optimization for this method of combat was both fiercer, more optimized, and more resistant than any other known vertebrate headbusters, living or extinct, including animals like pachycephalosaurs and tapenocephalians like moss chops. Said impacts are even found on juvenile animals, 
as a subadult specimen with pathological structures interpreted as chronic osteomyelitis, the infection of bone, was found in the headgear, indicating that younger animals also engaged in said headbutting behaviours as well. This behaviour is also observed in living giraffoids, particularly giraffes, although this behaviour is different in how it is conducted. Alongside this, said headbutting may also have been another explanatory variable as to how giraffe necks became as long as they have. Giraffes hit rivals sideways with the heads and necks, instead of directly head-on, clobbering one another with their smaller, horn-like ossicones, with said quote-unquote necking, as it is known, potentially being the primary driving force for their long necks, and the high-level browsing was likely a compatible benefit of this evolution. The long necks of giraffes have been held as a classic example of adaptive evolution since the time of Darwin, and is a natural selection process that has inspired various hypotheses to explain their peculiar feature. Competition with other browsers for food resources and the next for sex hypothesis, in which elongation is related to intermale competition, are just some of the many that have been proposed. Testing this is difficult, however, although the fossil record from their close relatives can play a crucial role, with Discocherix now being a key staple in this discussion. Although their skull and neck morphologies differ greatly, both extant giraffes and Discocherix utilise and indeed utilise aspects of these parts of their bodies in male courtship struggles, both evolving in an extreme direction. The neck size of male giraffes in many cases is related to social hierarchy, as a longer neck is able to generate more speed and power, in addition to extended browsing capabilities. As such, their behaviour may well have strongly influenced their morphological evolution as well, being able to reach higher sources of foods at the same time as reinforcing territorial behaviours. Another factor for both giraffes' long necks and Discocherix's formidable headgear could also be in regards to the marginal ecological niches they occupy in contrast to bovids and cervids in order to avoid competition, something supported by the environments in which the group diversified in. By analysing the chemical signatures in their tooth enamel to gain a glimpse of their eating habits, it's revealed that Discocherix occupied a specific niche in their ecosystem comparable to extant giraffes. The team also analysed the chemical signature in D. Shishir's tooth enamel to gain a glimpse of their eating habits. It was found that Discocherix was living in open grasslands, and may have even migrated seasonally when food was scarce, with said chemical signatures being distinct from other herbivores found in their region at the time, suggesting that they were feeding on different plant materials, mainly including tougher grasses and shrubs. Their environment in northern China during the time they were alive became more arid over time, due to the rise of the Tibetan Plateau in the south, which blocked the movement of water vapour, creating a drier environment in the process, as well as forming more environmental pressures on their ability to survive. A similar situation occurs when early giraffes began to appear about 7 million years ago in Africa, with them experiencing a similar environmental change, as the East African Plateau shifted from forests to grasslands, the same events which would go on to diversify hominin evolution. It is noteworthy to mention that extant headbutters generally live in harsher environments with lower productivity in their environments, e.g. bighorn sheep in rugged mountains and muskox in tundra, which may indicate that said violent fighting behaviours, in order to assert dominance, may well be related to survival-related stresses caused by more inhospitable environments. Comparing several groups of ruminants, it was also found that giraffoids exhibit a higher headgear diversity than any other related animals, in large part due to the lifestyle of specific ecological niches which may well have fostered various intraspecific combat behaviours. This extreme head neck morphology in different lineages is in stark contrast to today, given there being only two extant representatives, although as a whole, including extinct members, giraffoids seem to display more diversity in headgear morphology than any other ruminant group with the criteria set up by the study finding a total of 14 known types of headgear in Giraffomorpha, Giraffoidea plus Paleomaricidae, 13 in Giraffoidea, 9 in Cervoidea, and 8 in Antilocapridae plus Hoplitomaricidae. This diversity could be down to the dermal nature of their headgear, with them having ossicones having strong developmental plasticity and flexibility due to their ossification centres not being constrained in specific areas, such as the tip and outer surfaces in bovids, being distributed deeply and widely within the headgear. These results show that biotic factors, such as differing strategies in sexual combat, may well have acted on giraffoid head neck morphologies, with neck and combat in giraffes being one of the primary driving forces for extant giraffes to have evolved longer necks, with the added benefits of high level browsing also coinciding. Of course, since female giraffes also have the longer necks and limbs, a combination of natural selection for dietary preferences alongside sexual selection shows that a number of factors were relevant for their evolutionary trajectory. And as with most, if not everything in zoology and biology, things are not always as straightforward as we tend to think. Another interesting result from the study, this time a taxonomic one, raises questions on another peculiar Miocene ruminant, that's being Cydemotherium, 
an animal I've also made a video on for those interested, with it being found that they may actually be a giraffoid instead of a bovid. This is supported by the lateral semicircular canal being close in proximity to that of the posterior semicircular canal, a condition seen most commonly in giraffoids and less so in bovids, with theirs being higher up. Alongside this, histological sections of their peculiar headgear demonstrate a lamellar structure with some large osteons, characteristic of mature bone, which is similar to that of some fossil and extant giraffids. They also share the ventrally fused occipital condyles and the central development of the headgear, with it being almost solely supported by the parietal bone, a feature absent in members of Bovidae. As such, the study classifies Cytomotherium as cladding alongside Discocerix in the newly formed clade, Discocerucinae, although it will be interesting to see if this classification holds up on further inspection. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals, and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.